This is a Goodwill store find that I that I just had. This is uh, this made by wherever um, wherever uh, makes a whole bunch of um, frying pans now, kitchen kitchen stuff. But they used to make all kinds of extra stuff, and this is one of them. This is a uh, hand cranked uh, vegetable processor, food processor. It comes with uh, five different drums. They're all numbered. This one's uh, numbered number one. They're all lined up in order here. This one's this one's number five, and. They attach, they got this uh, uh, cog and slot attachment system that works pretty slick. You, uh, you take your drum, your drum's got a, uh, um, it's got a shape right here in the middle that matches this nut right on the end of, um, right on the end of the crankshaft. You fit your drum over that slot where it'll match where it'll match the cog the best that it that it can. You push this thumb wheel and then you work you work the handle against the spring. You push the drum in release the spring and the little levers catch the inside um, catch the inside of the drum the drums uh, up against the nut there uh, this will not this will not slip and slide as it's working so it's got a a tapered slot attachment right here that fits on the end of the base. This base is uh, it's some kind of some kind of cast metal. I'm not exactly sure what it's made out of. This here's this here is aluminum on the outside here. Then you you press it down. The spring let spring lever catches, and it holds everything together. It's released by this lever right here. You push this lever in, and then you can slide it right out. This is a rubber suction cup kind of gizmo. It's controlled by this lever right here, but it's the rubber. The rubber is is pretty old and pretty stiff. If you wanted to use it as a suction cup, you'd have to you'd have to replace the rubber somehow, or coat it, or soften it up somehow. Otherwise, it's got these rubber feet that that'll sit down onto your counter countertop and sit the way it's supposed to. But you would drop your food in this hopper here, turn your hand crank. And everything that's cut and sliced will fall out here into your bowl. So I wanted to show that. It's got five different five different drums. It's got the waffle cut, waif, wafer cut. It's got the I suppose it's the Julianne cut if you're cutting up carrots. Got the bigger wavy cut. It's got a shallow straight cut, and then it's got a deeper straight cut. These are made out of stainless steel. Um, this is this is aluminum. Um, there's uh, the center shaft is steel. This locking mechanism is steel. The handle is aluminum. 
this is some kind of um, enamel covered metal. I have no idea what it is, but anyway, I wanted to show that. This is another piece by wherever. And this is I it's some kind of squeezer, juicer kind of deal. You drop drop what you want it inside of there. And then you drop drop your lever down, squeeze everything gets squeezed against this back panel. And this center piece here has got slots for draining. And you do what you have to do once you're uh, once you get a once you get everything uh, full of pulp, you clean it out or you pull pull the stop up. But this cleans. This cleans by pulling the pivot pin out. You can pull the lever off, and it breaks completely down for cleaning. It's probably why it lasted so long. Is because it's about as simple of a device as you can get. This is something that was. Um, this is manufactured in this area. Uh, there's a. Uh, there was a clay works and they they dug clay from the riverside and then uh, made pottery this is actually a crock people people say well what a crock this is what basically what they were referring to these were main made mainly for making pickles and for fermenting cabbage um, around here it's for sauerkraut but um, fermented cabbage around the world has got different names. Koreans call it kimchi. But um, anyway, that's how uh, that's how they made it here. These these came in many different sizes. Some of the one of the biggest ones that I've seen is uh, six feet tall and uh, about four feet across. You would take a, a dinner plate. And put on the top, and then you put a weight on it to push down on on top of your fermentation. That way, uh, that way, your uh, as cabbage ferments, it it loses volume, and you always you don't want it floating in the air, or it'll um, it'll tend to go sour and go bad on you. But if you if you kept it down below the liquid level, it um, it would ferment and it would it would stay preserved. But this is a small, small version. It's uh, it's got some cracks in it, but um, I've got a bunch of these. I got two of them upstairs. I keep my uh, uh, kitchen utensils in, but they're smaller than these yet too. There's two more in the back room. I got uh, the old moonshine style jugs. That's what molasses and all kinds of the the kitchen liquids that you would buy now uh, they, were, they were all shipped in uh, uh, crockery jugs uh, I got a five gallon version I have no idea what was in it and I don't have any intention of eating anything that gets stored in it now it's all for decoration but uh, so much for show and tell